Back when radio airplay was basically how everyone found out about new music, it was hard to mispronounce a band's name. DJs introduced the songs and who performed them, so unless your local radio station was run by total dopes, you knew what was up. But in today's streaming free-for-all, plenty of music fans read a ton of band names without ever hearing them spoken out loud. It's not like Spotify has a pronounce this band feature, but they totally should. Not every band is as easy to say as, say, Smash Mouth or Oingo Boingo. So, unless you're one of the musically informed elite, here are a few band names you've probably been saying wrong this entire time. Get lost, Corey. Responsible for 2013's soft rock meets 90s R&B hit The Wire, this band doesn't pronounce their name like late 80s teen idol Corey Haim. I'll slap the headphones on once in a while and dibble-dabble at the keyboard. Or even Haim, as in the life-saving Heimlich maneuver. Hey, how you pronounce our last name is Haim. Two syllables. There you go. Haim. It also happens to be the last name of the three sisters in the band, so we're going to consider them experts. Either way, we can all agree that Haim is a whole lot better than Haim. A Walter by any other name. This Belgian-Australian performer's real name is Wouter André de Backer, which isn't quite as cool as the name he's given himself. Wouter is the Belgian counterpart of Walter, and Gautier is the French counterpart of Walter. Basically, this guy chose his stage name by running his real name through Google Translate a bunch of times and then spelling it wrong for good measure. But if spelling stuff wrong worked for the Beatles, it's probably good enough for this guy. So. How do you actually pronounce it? Yeah, I just have started to say, well, however you pronounce Jean-Paul Gaultier's surname, All that's right. it. So, referencing a French designer's oft-mispronounced last name is the best we can really do. But if you're still having trouble, just remember this pictograph. Goat, T, yay. Got it? Good. Now stop saying got ye like some kind of uncultured swine. Sleepy Justin and his good liver. Musician Justin Vernon also riffed on French when coming up with his band name, but for some pretty weird reasons. If the sleepy singer sounds, well, sleepy, he's got a good excuse. He fought through a pretty rough bout of mononucleosis. Ooh, the kissing disease. <laughs> Vernon borrowed his name from the French phrase bon hiver, which means good winter, and because the word hiver reminded him of liver. Vernon was having liver pain due to his mononucleosis, and the rest is history. Very weird history. Do I call you Justin or do I call you, are you bon hiver? No, Justin. Justin. Yeah. All right, now, the bon hiver is the group. Yeah. We're just glad his suffering was directed toward the upper half of his body, and that we don't have to call him Bon Esticle. Oh, oh no, no! Punctuation. The California dance punk band, which calls itself, uh, this, got their name not from an expression of extreme surprise or a malfunctioning computer keyboard, but from the subtitles in the movie The Gods Must Be Crazy, which represented the native clicking language with exclamation points. The band says that saying their name with simple clicking sounds is acceptable, but they're open to interpretation as well. Everyone pronounces it differently. How yeah. do you pronounce it? Uh, my favorite is probably just the original. Of course, their name also makes them impossible to search for online, so good luck finding out when they'll be coming to your town next, unless you use their more sensible phonetic spelling, which only kind of makes you sound like a hungry locust. The answer to a question nobody wanted to ask. As strange as they are, there's nothing too unusual about the name of these South African rap rave weirdos. It's just Afrikaans for the answer. And if the sleepy old fogey David Letterman can get it right, so can you. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome D. Antwoord. The members of D. Antwoord, by the way, describe themselves as, <clears throat> here we go, fresh, futuristic, flamethrow, flow, freaking zep rap rave crew which has to be the microist of microgenres. Please buy a vowel. This Canadian electronic duo spells its name like this, which looks more like a doomed startup than a band. But just like Tumblr, Flickr, and the rest of the vowel-challenged bunch, their name is pronounced like a normal word. It's just Mastercraft. Why is it that so many, like, electronic acts like, change letters and, like, take out letters and add numbers and make words? Drugs. There's another company in Canada called Mastercraft, and they make power tools. While going vowelless is a band name trend with remarkable staying power, Mastercraft says search engine optimization was also a good reason to ditch the extra letters. Ah yes, the holy trinity of professional musicianship, sex, drugs, and SEO. Holy spell check. Another band hoping for search engine prominence, these Scottish synth-pop musicians went old school and decided to use a Roman V instead of a U. So, quote, Google wouldn't confuse the group with actual churches. 
Search results for churches anywhere on the planet buries the band's page, but adding that little V gets you nothing but band-related results. The band says it backfired a little bit, however, because people frequently ask how their name is pronounced. Hey, I'm Martin. I'm Lauren. I'm Ian. We are a band called Churches. It's Churches. Just Churches. Double V equals W. Want even more confusing Vs? The Canadian fuzz pop band responsible for 2014's infectious Mary Me Archie had to switch up their name when there was already a band on Sony Records called Always, so they made a quick switch, following a long tradition of mixing up Vs and Ws. We're looking for the naval base in Alameda, but could you tell me where the nuclear vessels are? Their name isn't quite as Transylvanian or complicated as it looks. It's simply Always. Oh no. This Jedi-robed Seattle drone metal band took their name, which looks like this, from the now-defunct Sun brand of amps, which featured a logo that, if you squint, kind of looks like their name, but the band is simply called Sun, not sun Oh, even if they kind of make that sound a lot. The band says fondness for the amplifiers is mainly why they chose the name. But there are a few other reasons for those menacing parentheses that they won't disclose. Drone Metal Jedi's gotta have their secrets. A Swedish Tongue Twister While we'd love to hear professional hosting gnome Ryan Seacrest mangle the Swedish indie pop singer's real name, which is Lai Liki Tomojez Sikseron, she decided to keep it simple. Just not simple enough. Lik li? Lik li? Lik li? Hi, I am Lik li. Unfortunately for her, Licky Lee only ends up sounding like what the kids call the creepy guy who lives down the block and won't stop wetting his lips. Maybe she should take some more time to think this one over. Should have just called himself DJ Benji. The origin of this guy's name is even dorkier than you can imagine. Benjamin Hammond Haggerty came up with it for his high school class project. I was in high school, I was in graphic arts class. We were assigned a superhero and we had to give him a name and I named that superhero Professor Macklemore. Because, you know, high school. He soon started calling himself that as well. He says he later dropped the professor part because he realized it was, quote, whack. Whatever you do, don't call him Macklemore. It's Macklemore. Not to be confused with 2004 breakbeat DJ Milk collaborator Macklemore, of course. Or, you know, any talented musicians. Placing the name. Like dozens of bands before them, these indie rock icons took their name from geography. Portishead, Cypress Hill, Boston, Chicago, Diarrhea Planet. All great places, and we assume that this road in Washington State is no different. Contrary to everything you've learned about English, it's pronounced Slaterkinny. Get it wrong and there's a slight chance they'll beat you up, because they totally could. So get it right. It's Slater. Like professional surf monster Kelly Slater. Or professional squinter Christian Slater. Or even just Slater. Probably not going to forget this anytime soon. Flower Power. We've come to expect some pretty unusual names out of Iceland. Thanks, Björk. And this Icelandic post-rock band is no different. They took their name from the lead singer's sister, Sigaros, which is a fairly common Icelandic name, which means Victory Rose, which, when translated, sounds like the world's least effective superhero. And if you're trying to translate their lyrics, there's a good chance you're not even singing in real Icelandic. They have an entire album simply titled with a pair of parentheses, which is literally sung in gibberish. It's like every band pronunciation nightmare wrapped into one. So, good luck with that. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.